Hello, everyone. Welcome to News Now from the Belmont Journal. And we're joined by Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian. And Franklin, let me ask you, what is in the news this week? Well, uh, let's talk first about uh, some good budget news. All right. And that is that uh, uh, on March 1st, uh, Maura Haley, who is our new governor, uh, present her budget uh, to, uh, well, filed her budget uh, on, on, on Beacon Hill. Um, and uh, she basically, um, there's a lot of money in, in, in state coffers, so she's uh, passing it around. And some of that money will be coming to Belmont. Um, she is spending um, a good portion of that money, uh, that, that surplus the state has, for communities, uh, towns, cities, on local aid. Okay. And uh, so when uh, the numbers came in, Belmont will receive about $1.5 million extra for the 24 budget. So what that means is that, you know, we, we were, you know, there was, we were in a deficit. We had, we were tell, asking, uh, you know, the schools in town to, to make serious cuts. Now we have $1.5 million. Now the interesting thing about this is where does that go? Well, so Franklin, um, you know, it's important to note that the, the bulk of this funding is uh, chapter 70 school aid and it's intended for schools. Now the, the question in my mind is, uh, Will this will this benefit the schools, or are we still looking at at, at cuts in the schools? What's what's your what's well, your well, thought on that? Well, uh, you know the the cuts that were being proposed as of the last uh, uh, budget summit was about two point one million dollars in school funding cuts, which means about twenty what twenty six twenty seven uh, FTEs that would have to be cut, and uh, just a real uh, just a bad bad thing to happen, especially when we're opening a new school in the middle school. Um, now, where will the so even if you gave the schools the one point five million, you would still have you know about six hundred thousand dollars in cuts. But still, that's a lot less than than you would expect. But right now, there seems to be a a, a, a mood or a movement in in town, uh, especially on the Warren Committee and, and other and uh, also officials, the, the select board and on the select board that believes that we should be um, husbanding as much money as we can. And uh, so that if the override in 20 uh, next spring, next spring, basically, um, if that doesn't pass, we'll have at least some money to to uh, make it less of a blow, basically. And, and the risk becomes that, you know, if your reserves are significant enough, then people point to that and that becomes an excuse not to vote for an override. And, that, and we I have already heard somebody say that, oh, you know, we've got one point five more million dollars. So why, you know. Don't we have enough in, in, in free cash? And what about and what about uh, you know next year's free cash? You know, so you're, that's right. Many people have the perception now that money is coming in. Well, why do we need an override? So, so Franklin, technically, nothing has been decided about that 1.5 million yet. Although oh, no. my understanding is that you know there are there, there's there's a meeting coming up on um, March 20th. And this involves the select board and the the Warren committee. The school committee is not invited. That's that's that should say a lot right there. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. So so um, you know we'll, and 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 once that uh, the uh, that amount of money was uh, announced um, at the select board meeting, um, you know they, they said automatic. They said right at that point. They said we're we're not going to do anything until we 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 meet. Uh, on the 20th. But uh, Patrice Garvin, our town administrator, did say that she's already started conversations with the schools and with the town, town departments, and even committee member, uh, committee and uh, board um, uh, heads to see where the money can go. You know, so she, I, it looks like she's, she wants it to be equitable in some way, you know, so we'll find out. All right, we'll see. There's, there's. As, 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 as a departing uh, select board member, Adam Dash said, more is better. <laughs> More is better than less. And it's not over until it's over. So stay tuned till March 20th. Um, no, I think it'll be more than March 20th. I think the first time we hear about it is March right. 20th. And then we'll go through a couple of more uh, budget meetings. And and, we'll, we'll, and, and, and and ultimately, it will be down to town meeting. Okay. So um, up next, uh, superintendent finalists have been announced. Yes, uh, I will say that uh, this um, uh, uh, this uh, committee, the um, search, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the search committee 
was uh, very good because they kept it under wraps. No one, the, no one heard anything. The, no the one, superintendent screening committee. That's right. They they were very um, uh, stealthy and in, in their uh, um, whittling down of candidates. Uh, but now we're down to three candidates. And if yeah. I and if I can find my piece of paper, let's oh. We have the names. Yes, we do have the names. Oh, is it here? Yes. Thank you. Because it just came out today, just around uh, right. 10 o'clock. All right, drum roll. Yes. So the finalists for the new superintendent are uh, Dr. Kimo uh, Carter, who is currently the su uh, assistant superintendent at, well at Weston Public Schools. Okay. We have Dr. Jill Geyser. Who is currently the assistant superintendent at Bill Ricca? All right. Um, and we have far afield Dr. Carly Simon. Carly Simon. Uh, and not not, the, <laughs> not singer. the singer. Not the singer. And uh, she was the former superintendent of schools at um, in Florida. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Alachua? Yeah, Alachua. It's, it's, it's difficult names to pronounce when you're from New England, you know. Okay. It's 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 uh, it. You know, the only thing you need to know is it's in Florida, and that already tells, right, so that already tells you all you need to it's, know. It's it's um, it's considerably warmer there, and it's and, and as and you know we can go down the candidates. Um, uh, Mr. Carter is a Belmont resident, um, okay, and he lives on Willow Street, um, and he is, I believe, I believe I have to look at this because these names just came out. I think he was a candidate at some other school in Belmont, like many years ago. But uh, I'll look into that. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. Geyser is from Bill Ricca. She has a very long um, uh, tenure there. Uh, she is um, uh, also, uh, she was in a bit of a controversy, you know. Um, um, what, what is that, Franklin? The, the controversy was that uh, uh, that uh, on Martin Luther King, a uh, Martin Luther King talk, talk um, she's a member of the of the of the friends of, of like I think Bill Ricca schools, you know, mm -hmm. just like we have. Yeah. You know, the foundation of Belmont uh, Education. They right. have a similar one, mm -hmm. and they and they paid out money for a person to come speak. Unfortunately, that person has a lot of legal <laughs> issues uh, she has uh, on her plate, and many people are saying, why was she given the opportunity to make money off of you know Bill Ricca, and which the superintendent later, which the I think the principal uh, of the high school said, yeah, we have to apologize. We'll vet our speakers next a little bit better. So that's something, but you know, that's just one, that's one thing, you know, yeah. we, you can't really make a big deal about that. Um, or I don't, don't think you can do a big deal about that. Now, Ms. Simon also, she has a little bit of a, of a, a little bit of a controversy, his controversial history. She was the superintendent in this place. She was first the interim superintendent. She was made the superintendent. This, this is in Florida. This, Florida. Uh, so she was fired uh, just without cause. You know, just they just fired her. Uh, they they blamed they, they they blamed her for for low teacher. Um, um, uh, you know the 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 backgrounds of the teachers. The teachers were just not happy. Okay. And, and they blamed it on her. And 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 uh, but um, as one of the um, uh, I guess they have a school committee. They have to, I don't know what they're how they constitute. It, it would be a school board, most likely. Yeah, the school board, and, and and the person on the school board said, "Hey, we're the problem. You know, we ha we're we're not making we don't, we're not putting uh, something for her to succeed. Um, you know, because you know, in this county, they've had uh, seven superintendents or seven seven super and interim superintendents." In ten years. All right, so she's that's a, that's a that's a crisis, right? There. She, she's coming from from a, a district that sounds like it's in crisis. Yeah, it's, it's, somewhat it's, of a it's, turbulent situation. And, and it's also there might be some politics involved in that also because um, once uh, the, the head of that uh, the board was appointed by um, um, let's let's call him the, the very right wing authoritarian governor of uh, Florida, Ron DeSantis. You'll be speaking of right, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> Ron DeSantis. And once he got on the board, he was like, oh, with, you know, she needs to go. And maybe with that, you have to look more into that. So, you know, she 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 was in, in a situation probably that was um, n not very sustainable for her to begin with. But we have three candidates. Uh, they'll all be here. And our dates, uh, let's see what these dates are. We have the dates will be on the 14th and 15th of March. That's mm -hmm. next week. And... Um, 
uh, they will be at the Chenery uh, Auditorium. Um, uh, Geyser and Simon will be there on the 14th. And on the 15th will be uh, Mr. Carter. He can probably walk to uh, the, Chenery, <laughs> the Chenery Auditorium because he lives on Willow Street. So. Okay. All right. So he'll be saving on gas money. <laughs> All right, Franklin, um, let me ask about the continuing sa saga of the um, the Belmont Hill School parking lot. Maybe that's a saga that's coming to an end? Yes, it sounds like it is. I mean, on Monday, uh, there was an agenda item on the select boards uh, that the select board, select board put out, and they stated that uh, they were going to have an update on the school and, um, and also talk with the uh, uh, chairman. Uh, and that would be uh, Matt Lowry, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, I shouldn't say chairman, I should say the, yeah, the chair of uh, the planning board. Mm -hmm. um, but what it really was, was a, it was an opportunity for the select board, mainly Mark Palillo, who's the chair of the select board, to read the right act to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, to, because what he had seen and what he is see still seeing is that uh, any kind of community, that the communications that are, that are coming to the select board, to, to, to the town about this, process is, is getting you know a little too hot and a little too hot and heavy um and including one person who said look if, if the select board doesn't involve itself in this process there's going to be riots in the street you know and i think that's the one that just ticked off uh, mark and uh, he, he basically said look you know there's you know you can't say these things we can't get into a, a situation where one person's opinion is considered, you know, you know, uh, something for a violent attack. And um, I don't think, and, and, and he basically said also, you know, this doesn't mean that we don't want to hear from you. We do. You just have to bring the, you just have to bring the, the language down and just cool it off. And then, you know, he also, he also pointed out that uh, the select board cannot put themselves into this, into this situation. It's the planning board. It's the planning board. So, so Franklin, let me, let me ask you this. So, you know, the hot, the hot button issue here has been the, the loss of, of seven forested acres of, of woodland habitat, which, which residents uh, are very upset about. And, um, uh, you know, where, where is this all headed? <laughs> well, this is headed, well, as Mark Galillo said, it's not heading to the select board. They yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we understand, we understand that. And, and it's not going to be headed to, to, uh, the, uh, firing Matt um, Lowry for alleged bias uh, in favor of the school. Mm -hmm. um, number one, it would take far too long. Uh, it would just be a um, S show, as one town official said, if they ever attempted that. Because if if residents would try to get uh, try to uh, fire uh, Matt, it would it would just take months, years to get that whole process done. And we're almost at the end, and that's the important thing. Uh, so we're uh, almost at the end of the process, and and do do we know the likely outcome? Likely outcome is that an opinion will be made by the planning board, basically saying if the uh, if the school continues to do what the peer review says, like mm -hmm. maybe you, you need to take another ten parking spaces out, you have to do a better job in terms of traffic and congestion, you know, uh, and and wetlands, you know, just you know. And so far, the the um, the school has been amenable to uh, several suggestions um, from the planning board's peer review engineers, and um, it looks like it's going to just be. I mean, there's nothing really to stop it as long as the school is following uh, what the uh, planning board is asking them to do, and also um, if they're you know, within their rights under the bylaw. And and um, uh, under the law, and I believe it's the the Dover Act, um, mm -hmm. the the school could uh, potentially um, get, you know step outside of this process and and that, and that's what you don't want because right, right now they're accepting the peer review okay. uh, uh, um, actions so okay. and, and that's important because you, you want something you know if they can go out there and, and just basically do what they want and the playing board has little or nothing to say then then everybody loses all right well Thank you, Franklin. And you can find more of Franklin's reporting at Belmontonian.com. That's all for this week. Be sure to check in with us next time, and we will see you then.